Hi everybody, this is Professor McGee and I just wanted to um, give you a quick overview of the course. Hopefully by now you've had a little time to look around and you're a little bit familiar, but I want to make sure that everybody knows where everything is and that you're getting the most out of the tools that are here for you. So I'm going to start at the start here. Um, all the important documents you need um, are in here. So I'm, I'm going to go through, I'm not going to go through these word for word, but I do want to go through these um, just briefly here for you to make sure everybody um, knows what's required and, and where to find everything. So um, so this is the um, document that you, that you hopefully started with there that answers most of your questions. Uh, if you're seeing this, you should already be in my lab, so I'm going to skip that part. Um, some frequently asked questions. You do have to come to class for the three exams, so they will be at the Academic Testing Center. They will be there for at least a week before the due date, so you can come in anytime. If you know you're going to be away during the due dates, make sure you take the exam before you go, not after you get back. What if I miss a due date, um, or are there deadlines? And you can, you can see on the schedule, which I'll show you there, that everything is due on Sundays. And I will not be extending due dates for homeworks or quizzes. I do drop the lowest homework and quiz grade. So if you miss something, that'll be the one that gets dropped. Just make sure you don't miss a second one and your grade will not be affected. Um, I strongly recommend here that you do not wait until Sunday night for a couple of reasons. One is that every other college student in America probably apparently waits till Sunday night and Pearson runs very slow on Sunday night. So it will take you longer to do your assignments if you wait until Sunday. The other thing is that um, some things come up. Um, uh, you might have an internet problem and uh, that's not a reason for extending a due date. So the, the closer you get to the due date to get started, the bigger risk you run of of not getting that assignment completed. So if at all possible, do not wait until Sunday night. The other reason um, that that I, I recommend uh, giving your starting ahead of time is you have three attempts on the homeworks and you have two attempts on each of the quizzes. But if you wait until very late to get started, you don't give yourself time to redo the ones you missed. And so as long as you allot yourself enough time, there's no reason not to get really good grades on the homework and the quizzes. Um, Almost always, the only reason people get low grades there is because they um, they wait to the last minute and they don't have time to redo things, so they don't have time to finish. It takes them longer than they were expecting. Some of these homework sets are kind of long, so um, make sure you give yourself enough time to give yourself the best chance of getting a good grade in this class. Um, procrastination will definitely be your worst enemy in this class, so avoid that whenever you can. Um, you don't have to be online at any certain times. Uh, you can work it uh, when it works for you. We don't have group assignments. You can work at your own pace in that you can work ahead, but you can't work behind. So these are hard and fast due dates. You can't um, go back at the end and say, oh, I really wish I would have done those homeworks I missed at the beginning. Can I go back and do those now? Because no, you can't. So you can work ahead, but you can't work behind. And for the most point, um, the biggest advantage of an online course is the flexibility in the time. But the biggest disadvantage is that it will take more of your own time than if you were in class. So when you're reading a chapter, if you're in an in-person class and you're reading this chapter and you're struggling, you can just wait till you come to class and I can explain it. And here, you you know, I can offer some support, but for the most part, you have to kind of go through it yourself more than once. So it is going to take more of your time. So you can expect between the homework and reading the chapters and all that, you can expect to spend about nine hours per week on this course. So make sure you're able to do that. Again, if you're going to be traveling, you can do everything before you go, not after you get back. And email is definitely the best way to contact me. Some tips for doing well. Um, these are geared specifically towards online classes, but they could apply to, to anything really. Um, uh, you're responsible for this, right? So you, you need to take a lot more responsibility in an online course. You need to be self-motivated and you need to have um, a lot of discipline. Utilize the tools available to you. There's a lot of them there, so make sure you take advantage of them. I can show you what all these tools are, but I can't make you use them. Do not procrastinate. Have a backup plan. The Learning Support Center um, with all their computers is open 
seven days a week. So you can, if something happens to you now, if, if you start your homework at 11 o'clock Sunday and you have an internet problem, it's a little late to be using one of your backup plans. So, um, uh, the more problems you do, the easier it gets. So I'll show you a couple other tools. Um, unfortunately there are no shortcuts to learning accounting. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And that's really the only way. And so the other thing I wanted to point out here is the weekly workflow. This is what I recommend. This is over the years, what I have found gives students the greatest chance for success. First thing is read the chapter. And I know a lot of people, most people I think are tempted just to jump straight to the homework and, um, uh, and that's why they struggle. So read the chapter first, watch the videos. I have video lectures posted for every chapter, um, that show me doing problems and summarizing the, the concepts from that chapter. So watch those first, work the practice problems. The practice demo problems are not part of your grade, but they're a great way. There's a couple different ways to use those. Um, those are the problems that I'm doing in the videos. So you can watch the video and then go try it out on the practice problems. Some people, um, save the practice problems for when they're reviewing for an exam. So they've been doing all the homework and the quizzes. And now as they're prepping for the exam, they go back and work these just to check themselves and review and make sure they they've got everything. You can use them, um, any way that works for you. They are not part of your grade. You know, that's not your homework, but they are a great way to practice what you're learning. There is also, I'll show you in here too, a study plan. Again, not part of your grade, but it basically has every problem in this whole book. So if you're struggling with a specific concept, you can, you can work it there. If, if this stuff is just not clicking at first, the only answer is to do more of it until it clicks. And so the, the study plan is more problems for you. Over the years, I definitely, the students who use the study plan definitely get higher grades in the course, um, ex you know, almost every single time. Uh, so it's there to, for you to do as little or as much as you want. Um, after you've done the homework, I recommend making a little cheat sheet for that chapter. You summarizing the main topics like in your own words. So pretend like this would be the only thing you could take with you into the quiz or the exam. What would you want to put on this paper? What do you have trouble remembering? What do you, um, uh, you know, what, sometimes it's a matter of kind of translating it into words that make sense for yourself and then take the quiz and try taking the quiz using just that cheat sheet. You have another attempt so you can go back and, and redo it. But after you've, after you've done the quiz, look at what you missed, look at what you weren't expecting to see, those kind of things and update your cheat sheet with those things. And if you do that, when you get to the exam, you'll have this cheat sheet that has been customized just for you and what you need to know. And you'll have one of those for every chapter and you will sail through the exam. Um, uh, and it's, I know it seems like a lot of work, but when it comes time for the exam, you'll be very happy that you did all this and you won't be trying to cram all this information in at the end. Um, here's getting started with my lab. So hopefully, um, well, yeah, if you're seeing this, you're already there. So let me go back. Um, the syllabus, uh, hopefully you've already looked through that as well. So that is, um, Oh, that's a schedule. Sorry. So you can see that all of your due dates are Sundays and each week you have a homework and a quiz due. So for each chapter, you'll see the demo problems, which are not part of your grade. Then you'll see the homework and the quiz and the exams will be taken on campus at um, the testing center. And when you have an exam, that's the only thing due that week. So um, uh, you can use that time to review and prepare and, and, um, and all that. And then, uh, the syllabus. Um, here's how to get a hold of me again. Email is probably the best way. Here's all the exciting things you'll be able to do by the end of the semester. Your grade. So the homeworks, there are um, 11 homework assignments. I will drop the lowest grade. All those homework assignments averaged at the, at the end will be 20% of your grade. The quizzes, the same thing. You have 11 quizzes. You have two attempts at each quiz. Um, I dropped the lowest grade at the end and the average of the, the 10 that you keep will be 20% of your grade. And then there are three exams, which are each worth 20% of your grade. So you can see the exams are weighted much more heavily. That's really where it is. The homework and the quizzes are there to get you ready for the exam. That's the point of the homework and the quizzes is to prepare you to take the exam. So if you just, um, 
flip through the um, the quizzes and, and kind of guess, then they're not going to prepare you for the exam. So um, make sure you, I don't know, take those seriously if you were. The homeworks are all problems that are done in my accounting lab. The quizzes are all multiple choice. Uh, now sometimes you have to, you know, can do a problem to answer the multiple choice and the exams are a combination of both so the exams are multiple choice and um, problems and uh, let's see again not making up um, not extending due dates no makeups for homeworks or quizzes in really unusual circumstances there would be for an exam but um, I forgot is not a reason so um, uh, okay, and the rest of that I think you can read over yourself. The other things we have here are technical requirements for running my lab. So if you're having trouble, check that. Make sure you've got um, all your things updated and um, browsers and all that kind of thing. Um, my lab prefers Chrome. It runs a little bit better on Chrome. So if you're having problems, you might want to try um, installing a different browser. It does not like Internet Explorer. I, I have I run it on um, Chrome on some devices. I run it on um, uh, Firefox on some devices, and it seems to run fine in both of those. Um, I can, I use it on my iPad as well, but I I generally don't run it through Safari. I don't think it runs super great through there. So I have a uh, the Chrome browser installed on my iPad. And so when I want to use my lab there, I go through that. So I just think it works a little bit better that way. The other thing you have here are um, two videos on making sure you get the most out of my lab. And especially even if you've used like my math lab or something, some of the tools in my accounting lab are a little bit different. So I definitely recommend that you take a look at those to make sure that you are aware of everything that's here. Video lectures. Um, I've got these for, uh, there's about two for every chapter for the most part. And this is very, very similar to what I'd be doing in class. So it's some lecture. It's a lot of me solving problems. These are, these are basically the same problems that you have in the practice demos. Um, it might not be the exact same numbers as the ones you're seeing, uh, but it'll be like the same problem. So it'll be a different version of the same problem that you're seeing. So you can watch me do it and then you can go do it in the, uh, um, uh, in the practice demo problems if you want. And so it's, it's, there's shorter problems. I'm kind of illustrating concepts. And then when you get to the homework, it, it'll be, um, more in-depth versions of the same things. So um, that's what you'll see in the homework. But uh, this is the next best thing to being in class, I think. So uh, give those a shot. Um, make sure, you know, sometimes I get people who are all the way at the end of the semester and they don't even realize these videos are here. So definitely take a look at those. Those are a great resource for, for online students. Here are the assignments. Um, when you go here, you can see that you've got the practice demo here for each um, chapter. That's the practice. That's not part of your grade. Then you've got a homework. Then you've got a quiz. And so you've got that for every single chapter and, and then you get to the exams. So um, that's the same setup. All the due dates are Sundays. Um, again, homeworks, you get three attempts. Quizzes, you get two attempts. Quizzes are multiple choice. I just wanted to show you um, uh, I'm just going to pick a random problem here, but when you go into the homework, and this is one of those little videos, up here you can see question help up here in the upper right, and so you've got a couple different things. Help me solve this is is probably going to be your second best friend after the videos. If you get this and you have no idea what to do, you can do the help me solve this, and what it'll do is it'll pull up a similar problem. So again, it'll kind of be the exact same problem, but with different numbers. And it walks you through that problem step by step and shows you how they got every single number. Um, sometimes it's maybe almost too, de too detailed. You can kind of skip ahead to the part you want, but it'll show you, here's where we got this. Here's where these numbers came from. So I definitely recommend that. It does not um, count against your grade or anything. Demo docs are and videos are things on whatever this concept that you're working on is. Not everything has these, but again, it's kind of a step-by-step -step, uh, through the whole process. E-text pages, that'll take you right to the section of the book that is talking about this. 
Ask My Instructor is another good one. So you all have different versions of, um, of the homework problems. So when you say I'm on number three, that doesn't help me because I, I can't. So if you do Ask My Instructor, it sends me a link and I can see exactly what you're seeing. And so I will know exactly what numbers you have. And so that is generally the most efficient way. So if you have a question about a homework, um, definitely use the Ask My Instructor because again, then I can see exactly what you are seeing. You can print these out, but they print out really ugly. Um, uh, I think sometimes people try to print out everything and take it all to the to the testing center with them to take the exam. And then they spend, you know, they're just flipping through hundreds of pages then of notes trying to find something exactly like that. And I don't really think that's the best way to approach it. I think you really want to um, focus more on understanding it than trying to just find something exactly like that on the test. And um, the quizzes are timed. So once you once you start the quiz, your timer starts, but you do have a second attempt. If for some reason, I don't know, you lose your internet connection in the middle of a quiz, you can just sign back in and, and pick back up again. But um, uh, you can't leave the quiz and come back and do it later. You can't take the first five questions and then leave and go eat dinner and then come back and finish it because you will time out. So, um, so those are the assignments. Here's the study plan. I just want to kind of show you that briefly here. Um, here's the study plan. I always go right here to all chapters. And let's say I'm working on uh, chapter three, okay? And here's every section in chapter three. And you can say, okay, I'm fine with um, this first part, but it's this uh, third part here that I'm really struggling with. So I can go to 3.3. Here's all the problems related to that. I can work as many or as few of these as I want. Um, maybe I did the, the, the homework problem, but uh, I still don't feel like I got it. I can go back and do it again over here. Or these that says TI, those are the try it problems that are in your chapter. So you can go here to check yourself and see if you did it right. So um, the try it's are in the chapter. If it says QC, those are quick check problems. The S ones are short exercises. That's kind of what's in the practice demo and what I do in the videos. And then the exercises are a little bit longer. And the problems, if it starts with a P, those are the big long problems. And you'll have um, at least one of those in almost every homework assignment. Sometimes there's one big problem that covers everything we did in that chapter. And so those, those can be kind of long, but if you can do those, then you've, you've got the chapter. So the study plan, you can do as much or as little as, as you want. You know, you can just do one problem from there. Um, but if you're, if you're struggling, that's going to be my first piece of advice is that you just have to keep practicing until it starts clicking. And that's unfortunately, again, unfortunately there's no shortcuts. That's about the only way to do it. Results are, are your grades. Now, um, mine's not going to show anything, but when you, when you finished it, you can go here to review and, uh, It'll show you, no, I haven't actually answered anything, so I can't do that. But you'll see how many points you got after each one. And when, you, when you've done it, you can see what you got right or wrong. And after the quizzes, after the due date has passed on a quiz, you can go back and review the quiz and see what you got right and what you got wrong. When you go to the review page, it'll be showing you the correct answer. And if you see a little red triangle at the top, that means you got it wrong. And if you click on that, it'll show you here's what you answered and here's what the correct answer is. Uh, the e-text here, so depending on um, what kind of, so if you purchased it through um, the bookstore, uh, you've got um, you've got the e-text in here. So if you click on here, you've got the full text, and it's fine if you just have the e-text. You do not have to buy a hard copy of the book. Uh, if you took the orientation quiz, you should know that. So um this has everything though. This has everything in the whole thing, in the whole book. Here's chapter one. Here's all the parts to it. Um, and so you can, here's all the problems that are in the back of the chapter. So the entire book is here. It's searchable. Obviously it's portable. You can take it wherever you go. So it really is pretty handy. And the exams are open book and open notes and it's fine to use the e-text during the exam. And I think that's about it in here. Um, um, the, the other thing I was going to say, when you go onto my lab, um, and this isn't going to be able to, to show it, but, 
Uh, you had a couple different options when you were registering. So if you already purchased the access code, you could put that in. If you couldn't, if you didn't purchase the access code, you could purchase it through um, Pearson and it gave you two options. So the cheaper one, which was like um, $79 maybe, that's access to the MyLab, but it does not have the e-text with it. The other one, which was maybe, uh, I don't know, like 130-ish, something like that, that had the e-text with it. So it, unless you have a hard copy of the book, um, I do not recommend uh, purchasing. I mean, you can do it. It's going to be a real struggle, though, if you're taking this without any form of the book. So if you don't have a hard copy of the book, I do not recommend purchasing that, that $79 one because you won't have the e-text to use during the exams. You won't have a, a book to use for the quizzes. And it's really, really hard to get through this without it. But do remember that even though I know it's really expensive, it is for two semesters. So this, what you just purchased would be for accounting one and accounting two. And so when you get to accounting two, you won't have to purchase anything at all. You'll just enroll in another class and, um, and you'll be all set to go. So that's an overview of the course and of um, my accounting lab. Take some time to look around here. There's tons of, of other things available. If you go to, say, the multimedia library, um, you can go to a specific chapter, and there's all kinds of other things here, um, PowerPoints and videos and flashcards and all that kind of stuff. And you don't have to use all of the tools, but um, take a look around, see what's there, see what you find helpful. Um, see, sometimes just seeing things in a different way is is very helpful. So you can go to it here by chapter, and here's what you have. These are little tests that I didn't assign, but they're just you can quiz yourself if you want extra practice. On multiple choice, for example, you could go do these little chapter tests that are right here. Um, you can go to the study plan for that chapter. You can look at whatever other sources are available for that chapter. So there's a ton of stuff here. Um, see what works for you. And like I said, some people love flashcards. Some people that's not that helpful. But try them out and see what works for you. And let me know if you have um, any other questions. I'm looking forward to a great semester.